In 1948, a pharmacologist fed drugs to spiders. It affected the shape of their webs. Can we recreate this with modern AI? Let's find out. This video shows a recreation of the classic experiment where spiders were given drugs to see how this affects the web's shape. Except we'll use AI spiders, and instead of drugs, we'll deliberately disrupt their neural network. First, we'll cover the history of drug webs. Secondly, we'll show how a classic orb web is made. Then we'll explain our AI setup and the experiment. Finally, we'll show the simulations. Drugging spiders for study started in 1948 with Peter Witt, a German pharmacologist, and Hans Peters, a zoologist. The original goal was to get the spiders to make webs sooner, so that a film crew wouldn't have to wait all night to film the web. This didn't work. But drugging spiders produced intriguing distortions in the shape of the webs. The drugs were delivered either in sugar water or inside dead flies. Remarkably, the type of distortion was quite consistent for each drug. This web is the normal, or what we call, control web. Then, after a dose of dextroamphetamine, this highly irregular web was made by the same spider some 12 hours later. Number three, did the spiders like the drugs? They love them. They love them, okay. Over the years, other scientists continued this research. The images shown later in this video come from a 1995 NASA experiment. Our research deals with the classic orb web. The following overview describes its basic construction stages. Both the real-life experiments, and ours, take place within a rectangular frame. It's shown in brown in this diagram. The spider starts an orb web with a top bridge thread, spanning the entire width. It's shown in green. Indoors or when suitable objects are nearby, the spider climbs to attach the bridge to the end points. Outdoors, the spider ejects many silk threads into the wind until one catches on an object. This bridge can be dozens of yards long, even span a river. Next, the spider adds a loose thread, parallel to the bridge, which the spider weighs down to make an inverted triangle. Its bottom vertex will become the center of the web, called the hub. From the hub, the spider drops a thread to the ground. Radial threads which run between the hub and the environment fix the hub in place. Anchor threads secure the perimeter. More radials fasten the hub to anchors to balance the angular distribution. Then, starting at the hub, the spider creates a temporary, non-sticky spiral to stabilize the radials. Since the spider will soon remove it, our model will ignore this spiral for simplicity. From the outside in, the spider then creates the actual sticky capturing spiral and dismantles the previous one. The temporary spiral is logarithmic, but the capturing one is Archimedean. It keeps the same distance between turns. This ensures uniform capturing density. Here are all the thread types included in our AI model. For simplicity and to speed things up, our model makes some adaptations, listed here. For example, many orb weavers wait for the prey in the hub. They customize the hub by adding small rings, cutting a hole, keeping the capture spiral at a distance, etc. Such hub detail is omitted. Other adaptations include allowing radials to be made from the outside in. In reality, Spiders make them from the hub outwards. To speed things up, sliding down an existing thread is allowed, while real spiders would walk. Does the glue affect the spider? Yes. The glue forms small droplets on the sticky spiral. Once the spiral's finished, the spider will move along the radials, avoiding the sticky threads. Why is the hub often above the geometric center? because the spider runs downward faster, with gravity, and slower upwards, against gravity. The off-center hub equalizes the time to reach a random spot in any direction. How does a spider grasp the threads? 
The tip of a spider's leg has three claws and rough bristles. The middle claw grips the thread against the bristles. Why does a spider need eight legs? It matters while making a web, because orb weavers rely on touch, not vision. The front pair acts as feelers, to sense threads, tension, measure distances and angles. The rear pair places the new thread. So when making a web, the front and rear pairs function as hands, while the middle pairs are for locomotion. Let's now explain the software system controlling the AI spider. It consists of four stages. The first stage is a neural network which plans the web's shape. It decides just the basics, the start and end point of the next thread. For example, from here to here. Stage two, or the transit stage, computes the best path to the next destination across the threads created so far. Stage three is what biology calls proprioception, positioning and orienting the body in the world, given where the organism wants to move or what it wants to do, including planning ahead. Stage four covers the low-level motor function, how to place the legs so that they put the body in the right position, both now and during the next step. Stage one is machine learning, the other ones are procedural, that is driven by rules. Training networks for these stages would be very time-consuming. It's not needed, as the only thing we care about is the web's shape in stage one. The neural network was trained in the Unity IDE, using its ML agents package. Here's a montage of the development progress of the neural network. The biggest challenge was the sequential nature of making a web. The web's construction has distinct phases, described before. The threads in each phase have their specific geometric function, and the phases rely on each other. The neural network had a hard time learning this sequence. This resembles the Montezuma's revenge problem. Among all Atari games, Montezuma took the longest for AI research to crack, due to the sequential nature of dependent tasks needed to finish it. In such cases, machine learning acquires two dimensions, the tasks themselves, and their timing. In our case, this issue was solved with two features in ML agents, a goal signal and a hyperbrain. The goal signal is a set of extra inputs. It indicates what phase of a complex behavior we are now in. The hyperbrain is a small additional neural network. Based on the goal signal, it modifies the weights in the main network, so it can adapt to a specific task. The inputs to the main network include polar coordinates, previous action, and a perception sensor. Many shapes of the perception sensor were tried. The final shape is a point spiral, reporting on the nearby thread types. After a year of R&D, the spider finally learned to complete all phases of the web. The procedural motion engine is not important to this experiment, so we'll cover it only briefly. It was created in the 3D software Houdini. The software is procedural and programmable with Python. The engine is a state machine, which keeps track of the current situation, step by step. Shown here are the type of data it tracks. The spider is not animated. It's a dynamic simulation. We can't predict where the spider will be at a given time. Its motion has to be computed up to that point. In our experiment, instead of feeding any drugs, we disrupted the neural network of the AI spider. Here's how. The essence of a trained neural network are values called weights and biases. They regulate the firing of neurons. In a trained network, they're stored in nodes. To locate the relevant nodes, we viewed the structure of our network. The best candidates for disruption were gems, or multiplication matrices. They hold the bulk of the pertinent values. Here's a sample of these values. We deliberately overwrote some of them to alter the spider's behavior. To make the process systematic, we created an automatic value changer in Unity. It ran in inference mode and modified values within a small range. The range was shifted for each pass, and a screenshot of the resulting web was saved. Overwriting produced web distortions, but up to a point. Lots of overwriting did not lead to more radical distortions. The spider just froze. That's because rules in the code acted as a sanity check.
a complete shape breakdown could be achieved only when these rules were disabled. Experiments of this kind tend to be judged visually. That is, how closely do the distorted webs resemble the webs in real-life tests? Since all the distortions are random and different, for our animations, we chose to put together the web from parts from several distorted webs, so that the whole looks like one of the real ones. Therefore, no single value change in the neural network is analogous to any single specific drug. And, every distorted web consists of several separate distortions. A brief overview of the interface you will see. On the left will be the image of the real-life NASA experiment with a given drug. We won't say the drug names out loud to avoid flagging issues. Here's the status of the state machine. This is the spider. The species studied in the real-life experiments was the garden spider, Araneus diademetus. In our case, for clarity, it's shown in light blue with a simplified model. Every few steps, the AI pauses to choose its next move. It's shown as green arrows. In the non-distorted web, the pauses and the considered moves are exactly as they happened. In some spots, the AI may consider several dozens of moves. They are cut off at 10 per spot to save time. To match the shapes in the real-life results, the distorted webs combine several simulations, so the considered moves are not consistent with the web. We chose to show actual values in one node in the neural network, node 26. On the network diagram, it's located near the end. Presumably, a neural network of this kind has areas that lean towards three aspects. Perception, analysis, and decision-making. If so, node 26 would be involved in decision-making. Changes in its state are shown only when a decision is made, where to start or end, a silk thread. Everything between these decision points is handled by the motion engine. Research indicates that spiders always keep track of the direction to the hub. This view simulates it by keeping the axis between the spider and the hub vertically fixed. The bluish arrow represents the head of the spider, the yellow one, the back.
Overwriting values in a network trained to make spider webs will distort the web. A few of such distorted webs can be combined to look like the webs of real drugged spiders. Real life experiments show that making webs is genetic in origin. Baby spiders raised in isolation from other spiders go on to make regular webs. This means that the program for building a web is encoded in the spider's nervous system. If this system's architecture is analogous to an artificial network, it implies that it contains neurons hard-coded with values, or parameters, like those in our network, that is, encoding a web-making sequence. Roughly 300 million years separates the oldest spider-like animals from the oldest known spider web. It may have taken that long for the spider web to develop. Depending on where you start, 
It's about 50 times longer than it took for humans to evolve from apes.